a year, E3. My God, let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. So, first up, I just want to say thanks for listening. And I do my best now to not swear on this channel. Uh, depending on how things go, that may change during this video. Alright, everyone, so their vent finished, and... You know, have you ever watched something and you're just whelmed? Like, it does nothing to you. It doesn't disappoint you. And it doesn't really, like, leave you hanging. Well, this wasn't that. This was far worse. This was... So underwhelming to the point where if I put paint on the wall and watched it dry, I'd be far more entertained. Because EA, you have no idea how to do pacing. So let's get the good stuff out of the way. I thought Andrea Renee, if that's how you pronounce her name, I thought she did a good job. Uh, so extract her from what I'm talking about. Let's extract Battlefield because I thought that looked good. The Indies. And Anthem, which I think looks absolutely amazing. Let's extract them for what was bad about the show. Everything else. Okay, so Command and Conquer. What are you doing here? That franchise was dead for the longest time. And you bring it back as a mobile game? Not only do you bring it back as a mobile game, you do one worse. You actually manage to do one worse. You bring it back as a mobile game and shoutcast it on stage. That's double cringe force, people. Like, what were they thinking? Like, did they rehearse that and think, wow, that looks fantastic. The crowd are going to go nuts when we see some shoutcasting for Command and Conquer on a mobile phone. Is that really how they thought? Really? Really, a year? Is that what you think, a year? Because... It's just bad. Let's let's continue. The sports. Now, I thought the FIFA trailer looked actually good. The Madden trailer looked okay. But it, it just seemed like it was just weird for Pearson. And let's talk about the pandering. What am I talking about pandering? They could have came out at the beginning and said, just straight up, look, none of the games we're going to mention outside of FIFA are going to have loot boxes. But every time a game was announced when they said there wasn't going to be loot boxes, it was almost as if they wanted people to clap to them, to celebrate the fact that there's no loot boxes. Well, that's not how it works. That's not how it should work. In the way they went about it, it just felt like they were pandering rather than service and fans or the community. And let's talk about service and fans. Now, some Mass Effect fans are not happy with Anthem at the minute. I'll get into that next week. I'm going to do a massive video on Anthem because you know me. I like to cover Bioware's sci-fi games. But some fans aren't happy with that. But also, I think if there was any E3 to bring up... How shall I put it? If there's if there any time for to bring up Mass Effect, it was this E3 because... A month before last E3, it was quote-unquote put on hiatus as a franchise. Well, guess what? We waited five years for Andromeda. That was a hiatus. And I know I mention it all the time online, but it's important for the, the community, it's important for Mass Effect in general, that there is an addition of the Mass Effect trilogy ported to this gen. A lot of people still message me to this day saying, hey, I haven't played the game or the trilogy. Where can I play it? And I can I tell them where they can play it. But it, I, it shouldn't be like that. I should be able to tell them, look, you can buy it on Xbox One, PlayStation 4, and Switch. That's how it should be. That's how that conversation should go. But it's not. And, like, they had the audacity to remaster Burnout Paradise. Who on earth was asking for Burnout Paradise? And I know one person will reply to this saying, but I liked it. If you enjoyed Burnout Paradise, good on you. But honestly, out of all their games, they remastered Burnout Paradise in this A3 when they could have acknowledged the fans that were going nuts. That, hey, you know what? For the fans, we're going to put a remaster out there. 
for the fans, we will make money off this remaster, we'll put that remaster out. And they didn't. This E3 didn't have anything people wanted. And let's talk about Star Wars. What was it called? Jedi Fallen Empire or whatever? See, I can't even remember the name of it. They announced a Star Wars game without showing not even a title screen. Not even concept art. And then they say the game's next holiday. Holiday 2019? I'm sorry. I find that extremely hard to believe. Even Nintendo will actually give people a title screen. We didn't even get that. We didn't get concept art. That's how little I think they have built for this game. The game's probably a mess. I hope not. I hope the game's fantastic, but come on. You flew Vince Sampella out there to sit in a chair in the crowd to announce the game while he's sitting down with nothing. With nothing to show on screen, really? Is that where we are now? And let's talk about streaming. Oh, game streaming. I can promise you this. Game streaming will end up going nowhere anytime soon. And when I say nowhere, I mean it's not going to take off. People don't like to game stream. It's laggy. Even if you have really good internet, it's still laggy. And I think we should just... Yeah, you just need to take a step back. Look at where you need to improve. Listen to this video. Listen to your fans. Listen to the fans because, like, some of us are actually sitting here worried, thinking which studio you're going to close next. And again, you had no surprises. We knew something was going to be shown there by Vince Sampella, but we didn't know it was literally going to be nothing. Like, who would have thought that? They showed nothing for a Star Wars game, not even behind the scenes stuff. Anyway, if you enjoyed the video, please hit like and subscribe, hit that bell for notifications. I'm out. Try and have a good few E3 conferences, please.